Today, I want to talk about an incident and cautionary tale for people experimenting with next generation file systems and system administrators as Bcash FS recently had an issue that caused data corruption. BcacheFS has long been hyped over things like ZFS and ButterFS, promising a modern file system, and even describes itself as the cow file system for Linux that won't eat your data. BcacheFS calls itself an advanced new file system for Linux with an emphasis on reliability and robustness and a complete set of features one would expect for a modern file system. And here are some of the modern things that it has. Copy on write, just like its competition ZFS and ButterFS. Full data and metadata, checksumming, multiple devices, replication, things like extended attributes, ACLs, and quotas. It's scalable up to and tested with 100 terabyte plus with high performance and low tail latency and calls itself already working and stable with a small community of users. Now that's the interesting part as quote unquote stable has definitely been disputed. As in August of 2024, the lead maintainer here, Kent, submitted a pull request containing over thousands of lines of code that included significant changes that were way beyond mere just bug fixes. And Linus Torvalds himself expressed regret over merging BcacheFS into the kernel, citing concerns about its integration, development process, and testing. And today we see another incident that would back this up. As data corruption is a massive problem, especially when you tout yourself as the Linux file system that won't eat your data, this recently was an issue and I haven't seen many talking about it. So I want to get into it a little bit just to cover some of the uncertainty and concerns ongoing with BcacheFS as a user here who created a large test image file inside of the BcacheFS system, mounted and formatted it as ext4 and then copied large folders in parallel. And then something happened. So let's get into this. As the user says, hi, I think I'm not using BcacheFS the way it's supposed to be used, but I observe data corruption, which still should not be happening. And they're very right about that. No self-calling stable file system should have this, even though that BcacheFS is still in beta, but it's being used on many systems. And that's the bigger problem here. Anyways, I'm not fully sure how to debug this and what information to provide, but let me know what to do. I have a system with BcacheFS on a small SSD for cache and a large hard disk for storage. Then they ran a few commands here, which they allocated a file called test image with 512 gigs. Then they created a new ext4 formatted file system that's used by many Linux distributions into test image. And then finally, they mounted that test image into a location mount test. The test image file is created in BcacheFS, after which I copy a lot of files to mount test in three parallel commands. The system gets overloaded and I see red error messages in the system log and they show a log journal. And the big deal here is journal stuck waited for 10 seconds. After the copy process completes, I compare the files to the original using diff and many files are different. My kernel is Gen 2, 6.12, so relatively recent. I tested my RAM, didn't see any errors. Under normal operation, I have no errors or saw no errors or corruption with bcachefs. I only see the errors as I do above. And we get the developer response. Kent responds with dismissing everything by saying 6.12 is an ancient and effectively end of life for bcachefs and recommends upgrading to 6.15 where more bug fixes have landed, even though it's quote unquote stable by the main website, Kent initially questions us whether or not it's actual data corruption versus file system errors. The funnier part here actually is when the user says 6.12 still quite has some time for end of life, if we mean the same for L, meaning life, which I could see how they make that connection, just to be said, misread kernel.org, it's early, 6.12 is still effectively end of life for bcachefs. The rate of bug fixing has been high. Anyways, that doesn't phase the user. They keep going through and just letting them know what's happening and then supplying more tests to say that they still see this error on 6.14. And that effectively ends the conversation here, but we're about to see what Kent ends up doing with all of this. But before we get there, Take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video. YouTube can get finicky. Also, smash that like button on the way back up. Let's read more into this. The last message here in this chain of messages on the repo on the bug reports section, the user saying, I've been trying to check whether my hardware is faulty. I ran the same test without bcachefs, temporarily using my 128 gigabyte swap partition instead of an image file. But on the same HDD, I didn't see any errors which suggest my hardware is good and that it's probably a problem in bcachefs. It's great to see people like Kamurahan reporting issues like this because they help push projects in the right direction. The maintainer response here, could have been better. Kent isn't really known for their back and forth, but more for their amazing development skills. 
But people like this are the early warning systems and field testers that help software evolve from experimental to production ready or stable in BcacheFS's instance. The feedback here is crucial for maturing and catching serious problems like silent data corruption. That is a massive miss for BcacheFS. And I think it's being a little underplayed. Well, let's see what actually transpired after finding this massive data corruption issue. As BcacheFS promptly received updates ahead of 6.16, and I want everyone to be aware there is the data loss incident, meaning people that aren't using the kernel up to 6.16 do have the potential of losing data when performing operations like the user reported and copying files back and forth between different file systems. As the findings here is FSCK, or file system check, revealed unreachable nodes and broken back pointers. The file system showed structural errors that ballooned up to 30 gigs and hundreds of files had different SHA-256 hashes post-write. And running memory tests showed no hardware issues and this could have real world impact. A user lost data. This should be a lesson for all. BcacheFS is still experimental, even in the mainline. Journal instability and write pressure can cause silent corruption and run file system check with caution. Regardless, let's talk about the resolution here. As Kent did apply new patches, to fix all of this as we see a repair in how the check fix pointers can now repair btree node roots and we can now repair when we've somehow ended up with journal using a superblock bucket new introspection led to superblock errors counters and are now available in system file system previously they were only visible to show super which doesn't provide a live view new trace points were created error throw function which is called anytime we return an error and start to unwind. And here's an explanation of what kind of happened here. It seems that in 6.15, there's a bug where I and link on the VFS I node has been incorrectly set to zero with some unfortunate results. And then the two fixes here, BCH2 I node remove function now returns. Should we be deleting this I node and check sub volume was treating the dangling sub volume pointing to a missing root I node like dangling the rent and deleting it. This took longer to debug than it should have. And we lost several file systems unnecessarily because users have been ignoring the release notes and blindly running file check with the dash Y flag, meaning yes, sort of a force. Debugging required reconstructing what happened through the, analyzing the journal, which ideally someone would have noticed, hey, file system check is asking me if I want to repair this. It usually doesn't. Maybe I should run this in a dry mode run and check what's going on, which they're putting a lot of blame on the users here, especially with someone finding such a massive problem and so sophisticated as well. Regardless of how people run their systems, there should not be data corruption. Bottom line, not everyone's going to read the release notes and they sure shouldn't expect to lose data over not reading them. And it just break this down. Not just Linux kernel 6.15 was affected. Previous Linux kernels were affected too as the user ran it on 6.12 as well. The bug here seems to be that the system thought some of the files, aka inodes, had no links when they actually did. This caused the file system to wrongly delete important data, which of course is a big deal. The two fixes made is we get a double check before deleting files. And if a sub volume root inode is missing, it tries to reallocate instead of recreate them, which instead deletes the whole thing. Unfortunately, we did see file systems lose data because of this, specifically running that file system check with the dash Y command. But the silver lining here is we found this error before a lot more systems were affected. Now, Ken has an interesting way of saying things, and we're gonna get into that. But before we do, if you wanna level up your Linux experience today, go check out my Linux cheat sheet, mind map, and flashcards Today, download them at SavvyNick.com. Let's now talk about this incident. According to Kent, up to this incident, we've had an excellent track record of not losing data. So let's try to learn from this one, which is interesting as BcacheFS has been doing well for an experimental file system, but they're trying to get to stable as they've only had a relatively strong early track record, not really one labeled instability quite yet, as this incident actually highlights why it's not exactly ready for production safe. Anyways, this is a community effort. I wouldn't be able to get this done without the help of all the people QAing and providing excellent bug reports and feedback based on the real world usage. But please don't ignore a vice and expect me to pick up the pieces. Kind of backhanded here, as it at first acknowledges the fact that the users and testers were crucial for development of BcacheFS and gives them the credit where it's due. And then at the end, shifts the responsibility onto the users, implying that they cause or worsen the problem by ignoring a vice. It just feels off. It goes from a collaborative nature to 
what feels like being dismissive and ungrateful. This is kind of typical, which is completely fine. No big deal. If an error isn't marked as autofix and it is happening in the wild, that's also something I need to know about so we can check it out and get it added to the autofix list if repair looks good. I haven't been getting those reports and I should be since we don't have any sort of telemetry, yet I'm absolutely dependent on user reports. Now we'll be spending the weekend working on a new repair code to see if I can get the file system back for a user who didn't have backups. Now that sucks. As the biggest lesson and takeaway from all of this is behind any file system on any disk, you really need to be making thorough backups of any system that you're using. The fact that Kent is trying to personally rescue a user's file system should not be the case. I gotta say props to Kent for even trying to help with that. As a user, let's take this as a cautionary tale of you need to have backups. They aren't optional. It doesn't matter if you're using bleeding edge technology or not, or an experimental file system or not, tons of things can happen. Your disk can fail. There could be a failure in the right process. Some panic might happen. Some new hardware might damage your system. There's all sorts of ways to lose data. This should be a wake up call to everyone. Just go make sure that your backups are working and that you actually are making backups. As yes, this was an unfortunate issue, but the user would have been much better off if they had a backup copy of what they were working with. Either way, I wanna know how you're making your backups in the comments section below. Let me know, maybe someone learns from you. Don't forget to go down and subscribe right now and then come back up, smash that like button. You made it to the end, you're a true fan. Thanks for watching today and I'll catch you in another video.